Hello, fifth graders. This is the reading of Walk in the Woods. As I read, I encourage you to follow along. You may also pause the video anytime you need to. So let's get started. When you go for a walk in the woods, what do you notice? Do you notice twisted oak trees, green ferns, or screeching jays? Asmaret Asafya Burhi. Hello, fifth graders. This is the reading of Walk in the Woods. As I read, I encourage you to follow along with me. You may also pause the video anytime you need to. Let's go ahead and get started. When you go for a walk in the woods, what do you notice? Do you notice twisted oak trees, green ferns, or screeching jays? Asmaret Asafa Burhi notices organisms like these when she walks in the woods, but she also observes something you might not ordinarily pay any attention to, soil. Burhi is a soil scientist. She studies the different types of matter that make up soil. When Burhi walks in the woods, she looks everywhere for evidence of soil being formed. It might seem strange to think of soil forming because soil might seem like something that just exists, something that was always there and always stays the same. However, Burhi knows that soil is a system. It is made of lots of different interacting parts and it changes all the time. We took a walk in the woods with Burhi to learn more. As we started down the trail, Burhi picked up a handful of soil and felt its texture between her fingers. She told us the matter in soil comes from many different sources. Rocks break down and their matter becomes part of the soil. Soil matter also comes from dead organisms that decompose, breaking down into smaller and smaller pieces until they become part of the soil. Molecules from water and air mix with these other types of matter and become part of the soil too. Burhi explained that everything in the environment could become part of the soil. The rocks along the path, the leaves and wood of the trees, and even the animals could become soil someday. When organisms decompose, they make a rich soil containing lots of nutrients, which are important for plant growth. Nutrients help plants take molecules from air and water and make them into food and body matter. During our walk, Burhi pointed out evidence of trees decomposing into soil. This image says, this is a bay laurel, a type of tree that grows in forests and woodlands in California and Oregon. The next photo, this dead laurel tree fell down a few years ago and is now slowly becoming part of the soil. The image below, if you look closely at the part of the tree that is resting on the soil, you can see that the wood is decomposing. And the photo next to that, the matter in the soil is partly made up of dead trees that once stood tall in the forest. Burhi showed us evidence of leaves decomposing into soil too. This image with the green leaves, this is a California Bay laurel leaf. This type of leaf has a strong smell and people use it for a spice for cooking. The next photo, this leaf died and fell off the tree that it was once part of. Then came to rest on the forest soil. Picture below, this is a leaf that died months ago. And the photo next to that, these are leaves that have decomposed into soil. The nutrients that were in the soil leaves are now in the soil now. Burhi even found evidence of animals decomposing into soil. So this photo, this is a gopher snake. It is not dangerous to humans, but it is dangerous to gophers. And the image next to it, these are the bones of a snake that died months ago. On the side of the path, she noticed the remains of a dead snake. Only the bones of the snake were left. The rest of the matter that made up its body had decomposed and become part of the soil. Eventually, the bones will break down and become part of the soil too. In order to become part of the soil, dead plants and animals need to decompose. What makes them decompose? decomposers, which are organisms that break dead things down into smaller and smaller pieces. Decomposers add nutrients and other matter to the soil. There are lots of different kinds of decomposers, including millipedes, slugs, sow bugs, fungi, and earthworms. Most decomposers are bacteria and other organisms that are too small to see without a microscope. So we can see we have a millipede, slug, sow bugs, fungus, earthworms, and bacteria. 
as we were walking with Berkey, she told us it was not good weather for finding decomposers because it was too sunny. Decomposers like dark, damp environments. On sunny days, Berkey looks for decomposers under leaves and logs, which are good spots for decomposers to hide from the sunlight. In spite of the sunny weather, Berkey found some decomposers almost right away. She picked up a rotten log and uncovered some millipedes. The name millipede means a thousand feet, but that is a bit of an exaggeration. Millipedes can have hundreds of legs, but not quite a thousand. These small organisms eat the matter from dead plants and then leave droppings on the ground, adding nutrients and other matter to the soil. Once we had observed the millipedes for a while, Berhe carefully put the log back the way she found it. She wanted it to stay damp and dark under the log so that the millipedes could keep thriving there. Berhe looked under another log and found evidence of soil being formed right before our eyes. There was an earthworm with, with its droppings. Berhe told us earthworms live in the soil, eating dead things and leaving droppings. Earthworm droppings make more soil by adding nutrients and other matter to the soil. Farther down the trail, Berhe showed us another kind of decomposer, a beautiful fungus living on a dead tree. This type of fungus uses the matter and dead wood as food. Not many organisms can use wood as food, but a fungus can. The fungus breaks down wood into soil. Berhe explained that she could show us one of the biggest groups of decomposers in the woods, bacteria and other microscopic organisms. These decomposers are so small that you need a microscope to see them. Bacteria are almost everywhere in the soil, in the water, on animals and plants, and even on you. There are all different kinds of bacteria, but many of them are decomposers that break down dead things into soil. The caption for this photo, this photo of bacteria was taken through a microscope. All of the bacteria in this picture could actually fit on the period at the end of this sentence. But the picture has been made much bigger so you can see the bacteria. Bertie showed us one thing she doesn't like to find on a walk in the woods, trash that people left behind. Trash takes a long time to decompose. So this first image, this is a paper bag that someone left in the woods. This next image, this is the same bag after one month. The picture below, after one year, the bag has decomposed. And the next photo, some trash like this glass bottle will take many years to decompose. Our walk with Berhe really made us think differently about the world around us. Everything that is living will die one day and decomposers will break it down into soil. The soil is a complex system, and decomposers are constantly adding nutrients and other matter to the system. Now you've seen how soil, how a soil scientist like Berhe looks at the woods. She sees soil and decomposers everywhere, and she wonders about the things she observes in the soil. Berhe is always asking questions and investigating to find out the answers. If you ask questions, you are acting like a scientist. How can you find answers to your questions? Get your hands dirty and investigate. So let's take a moment and look at our glossary. Remember, these are important words that we should remember. You can pause the video if you need more time to look at these words. That concludes the reading for Walk in the Woods. Thank you so much for joining me.